thank you for joining me today. Hi, Abbas. Hi, Emil. Uh, really excited about um, our today's webinar because I prepared a lot of really interesting stuff to share. Uh, that's what I have from my personal experience and what uh, I've done several times. Uh, so thank you very much, Anton, for really uh, great and warm welcome. So let's see what we can do together today. So uh, it's about data-driven content marketing campaigns and what you can do if you don't have a lot of budget or have zero budget, basically. Uh, first of all, um, that's a really, really great phrase, which, um, which I had a pleasure to catch from a book. It's called TED Talks. And it's like talk like a TED, yeah, I believe it's like talk like a TED by the Carmen Gala and ideas are the currency of the 21st century. Just consider it a little bit. Just look around us and see how ideas really inspiring us and motivating us to interact with other people to buy stuff like, for example, iPhone. Take a look at this idea, because it's super simple, just combined all other ideas. So there was like, like plenty of other ideas, and Steve Jobs just took it and combined it, com yeah, combined it in one phone. That's it. But that was about also presenting skills, how he presented his idea. And that's what is really tricky here. Because what I believe from my perspective that there is a lot of a lot of ideas, great ideas, but they are not engaging, they are not persuasive enough, and they are simply boring, and that doesn't make us feel better, and doesn't push us to read it, spend our time. So that's not only about ideas. That's a combination of ideas and how we implement it. So basically, I think it's not mostly about how we collect our ideas and how we implement it, but that's a great uh, part. So, and today I want to focus not only uh, uh, on ideas like teeth, but also uh, trying to make kind of integration between generating great ideas and making them alive. And that's a really interesting number, 1,000 blog posts, and that's what I calculated today. So I spent some time by just calculating how much blog posts I can see in bus sumo fit in the marketing industry. Uh, for the last uh, 24 hours, and I was able to calculate around 1,000 blog posts, so basically a bit more. That's a lot, and that's a lot of noise, and we need to stand out in this noise and need to present our ideas and make our ideas stand out. So how we can do it? That's what I feel any successful ideas or messages, it doesn't matter. Also, I think presentation must have. It should be logic, data, and emotions. Only having all those factors inside your speech, content, communication, you can be sure that they're enough engaging and they're enough and effective to trigger an action from your customer. And today, as, as far as like emotions and logic, they should go together with data, come along with data. I want to focus mostly on logic and data and less on emotions. But emotions, it's a super interesting topic. And it's really interesting to talk about that. But as far as today, I'm going to talk about data-driven only approaches. I want to focus on logic data, firstly. 
And that's a sheet from Bus Sumer where you can see that a lot of blog posts they're based on data. So for example, there are like infographics blog posts. Like you see, I see like one from Facebook and another one about sync and write. They're based on data-driven approach. And so people like content marketers, they spend their time on collecting data and then visualizing them and presenting them in graphics. Or it can be some kind of research with, with, with a logic connection, like, uh, like I see, for example, uh, why simple um, about simple brands, which is um, the first one, when author analyzed a lot of different brands and found out data and based on data, logical connections between various factors. So that's what I think is the best approach here. But it's really easy to talk about, like you can do this, you can do that, there is a lot of options. But in reality, it's really hard, especially if you are not really creative and I'm not creative. I'm, let's say I'm not, I, I, I'm mostly attached to development and I was like, my background was closer to development rather than to a creative side like marketing. And for me, it's really hard to present new ideas, to brainstorm new ideas. That's why I use some tricks. When I have zero ideas, when I have no ideas, I try to inspire myself. And that's what I use. I want to share like resources and tools which I use to inspire me personally and be better. And I hope those tools will make a lot of sense for you as well. So first of all, I want to focus on some specific areas and some specific topics. So about generating data-driven content um, with the help of market or industry trends, competitive research and surveys. So the first one is the easiest one actually. There are plenty of different websites where you can grab all those insights, and that's my favorite. So uh, that's the list of my first websites where you can find all those insights about developing internet, a web, and uh, about um, various trends which is related to it, like growth of mobile users or something like that. So it, it sometimes I just browse those websites randomly and. I feel that something's starting to, to, to burn inside my mind. And that is how you can just browse a lot of information and then create your own based on other data, which is going to be a unique one, but based on research. So everything today is really related to research and data. Uh, so, that's uh, a couple of tools which also are really good uh, for market researchers. It's called Google Consumer Barometer, this one, and it gives a really comprehensive market trend analysis and you can play around it. It's really interesting in terms of um, user's interface and how it uh, helps you visualize different trends. So I highly recommend it uh, and it's really uh, inspiring tool for me personally. Um, so I, I'm going, I, I, I see like uh, uh, questions appearing in the chat and I will be back to them. So basically right now I want to stick with my presentation and then be back to all questions and comments. And really thank you very much for commenting and uh, keep going our conversation. Uh, and that's another tool uh, besides uh, Google Consumer Barometer, which is totally free to use. We have similar web, which is, I can't live without this tool. I think really it's my number one when it comes to market researchers, to understanding various websites, um, uh, users behavior and everything like that and how they perform in various industries. That's my number one website. And so it's not really, uh, let's say cheap, 
but if you want to provide a good content, you can try to use a paid version or what I do time to time, they have also besides uh, this one, it's a paid one, but they also have a free industry um, categories where you can browse various websites and then you can just manually with the help of your team hiring some freelancer really cheap one you can use upwork on any other website where can you can uh, hire a person for a few bucks you can aggregate those data and collect it manually because similar rep has a free uh, reports uh, also but you need to make searches in order to get the data so you can just take around i don't know two three hundred websites in your industry niche and make a comprehensive study about bounce rates, users engagement, traffic, and other related uh, tweet metrics. It's going to be really interesting. And uh, later, I'm going to show you some of uh, examples of those reports. And you will see how it's really beautiful in terms of visualization and presenting of data. So highly recommend to take a look at Google Consumer Barometer and a similar web. So, and that was about market trends. And also you can take a look from other angle from competitors, uh, success, and you can try to analyze their content in terms of uh, user engagement, like social media engagement, as well as uh, like uh, uh, SEO engagement. Because right now, so it's not a purely technical site. It's also about user engagement. And if um, users like this content, then it's worth to be, uh, to be nominated to check it and to research it as well. So I use a couple of tools here. Uh, so first of all, I use uh, SerpSat and SEMrush. They are really good in, in uh, visualizing the data, especially in terms of pages, which is like was really overwhelming uh, previously because I was um, forced to export all website pages and then I was needed in Excel to tweak it. Right now, I just can simply go to any of uh, those websites like SerpStat, for example, and here you can see uh, the most visible pages uh, in terms of SEO visibility. And you can browse them and understand uh, the quality of content, the ideas, and then try to combine your unique idea based on this data. The same SEMrush as well has as a roller dimension, so you can see uh, whatever you prefer, it's your personal taste. Uh, I don't pitch any tool right now, so I'm not attached to any tool. However, that's my personal preferences. And that's about uh, trying to understand not only uh, SEO, but uh, social media engagement, because um, social media is a part of a promotional campaign. And if people um, uh, are willing to share your content, are sharing your content, uh, it means uh, it's appreciated by them and they feel that it makes sense for them. So it's not a useless or meaningless content uh, mm -hmm. for uh, your audience. And that's, for example, uh, Hrefs, and they have a really nice um, a report where you can see it's, it's actually it's a tool for content analysis and where you can see uh, um, all content and uh, see how it's performing by any, so you can search by any keyword or domain name, and then you can see the trends. The same you can use a hero like Batsuma, and I really love this tool as well, and I use it honestly on a daily basis, because uh, Ahrefs I mostly prefer for backlinks, but they have a really good um, content insights as well, uh, but it's just my personal preference about Batsuma right now, and I mostly use Batsuma honestly. Uh, and uh, I love how Basum represents those data and it's really useful and I can analyze uh, different researchers here uh, and see the most popular researchers and understand the demands of market. And that's the idea about, um, so we had like, for example, statics data, like uh, market uh, trends and like our competitors data. And that's a way of creating something new, 
uh, with a really small budget, like running a race, which is really, I, lo I really love this one and particularly I use uh, this one in, in most cases. And so I've recently finalized my kind of huge project about the current state of uh, digital marketing agencies. Hopefully I'm going to launch it pretty soon. And that's what I did with the help of uh, multiple tools like Raven Tools, Deep Crawl, and many others. And I want to thank all of them for doing that for me. And that was uh, a fabulous uh, cooperation, which is, was, not, was totally non-commercial. And I believe those insights will bring uh, a lot of sense to our market and um, uh, will give uh, as well uh, interesting insights for other people in terms of understanding the current landscape. So uh, you can do it with uh, a couple of different ways, like, uh, for example, like I did uh, by uh, partnering with different tools. And if you don't have any of those options, like uh, who can provide you data and help you distribute it, then you can simply use Google surveys where you can uh, create a survey and for a uh, limited budget, which, which whatever you prefer in terms of your budget for $100, $200, uh, dollars, you can promote it and they're going to bring their traffic and answer your questions. And then based on this data, you can represent an interesting infographics visualization and content. This is going to be really interesting because um, in most cases, uh, it brings a, a, a lot of um, engagement. The other way uh, is using Twitter polls. Uh, so Twitter uh, has recently launched those options uh, and it, it, it's really great. I've, I've already uh, had a pleasure to see it in my tweet, uh, in my tweet feed, how people are using it pretty heavily. And I see that, um, so it, it gives an interesting insight. And you can also uh, make a combination of like doing it organically and advertisingly. So like advertise it as well. So, uh, and in that way you will receive a bigger group of um, respondents and answers. So that's a really easy way to do it. And that's not really expensive, but will bring you uh, uh, enough insights to represent it and to pitch for good blocks as well. If you're interested in contributing in a high level blocks. But it's, it's all about theory and about being theoretical about all those things. And it's, it's about just researching, analyzing, but what about real ideas? And I want to share with you a couple of real ideas which are, uh, I've already implemented and that was enough successful. That, yeah, they were enough successful. And I, I think it's going to, you can just copy and paste it, but it's not interesting from my point of view, but basically you can do it. I don't mind. But in my case, I hopefully it, it, it's going to create um, some kind of abasement for your uh, inspiration and for your creativity, what I hope to do here. So to trigger your creativity uh, by showing my uh, own campaigns. So it's about just doing it right now and not um, moving it to tomorrow. So let's do it right now. So there was like, actually, I lied to you because I used also a couple of examples of campaigns which um, I really love and I, I think they're, uh, they deserve to be here. So it's about Y.net and they're great guys and they have those uh, market reports uh, which uh, they're launching uh, on a pretty regular basis. Uh, basis and I, I remember I still remember the one which I uh, took at Brighton SEO when I it was like I remember I think it was in April uh, this year and I still have a paper copy of this report and I was really inspired about that and then I uh, started to do all those data driven also researches and I think it was a starting point of my personal uh, campaigns when I started to do to use it really heavily not like time to time, but uh, really focusing on that. Because when I had uh, those uh, paper vision in my hands, uh, I was really amazed by photos and everything. I, I think I need to, sometimes you need to touch it. And that was, uh, has happened with me. So I touched it and was really attached. 
which is like really interesting in terms of emotional side as well. So that's about like market reports and you can go to their website and check it and download it. And that's what I found out as an interesting uh, e-commerce uh, uh, report, which was, um, uh, which I was using for my personal needs as a starting point for my uh, e-commerce research. I'm still uh, in, in process of analyzing it and hopefully it's going to be launched shortly. And honestly, I use for this research also similar web data. And um, I think it's going to be a really good piece of content. And that's about like using a bit of, uh, let's say, research and comparison. Um, so we all want to see uh, the weekend uh, strong spots or points of any product or tool. So when I don't no, know when I buy a dress, I want to understand uh, their weaknesses and the strongnesses. Uh, so what is the weak and strong points of uh, um, of, of this dress? which is like, for example, it can be like texture, it can be brand or whatever. So basically with comparison to the similar things. And that's really interesting because um, there are not a pretty, um, there are plenty of different researches about that, but still market really, um, really love. So it, it's like how people really love um, those content. And so you're not going to, Miss, I think here if you are go if you decide to do it. So uh, that's a couple of articles which you can uh, use for your, let's say for uh, for your personal inspiration and for generating ideas. And that's what I did. It was my presentation at Angect, and I made side by side tools comparison in terms of quality of data. And so here is I was um, comparing. Uh, various tools, so uh, basically you can find it on my slide share. Uh, so this this presentation particularly, and there was like I took all the um, most popular tools like Spike Research Metrics, SEMrush, and the rest of others, and compared the quality of data in terms of search volumes because that's the most uh, weakest point in any tool, in any keyword research tool, whether search keyword um, keyword search volumes are comparable with the, uh, with the uh, Google Keyword Search Warrants, Google Keyword Planner, I mean, uh, I mean Cura. And uh, I found out a couple of really interesting insights here. So if, if you are, uh, so if you're interested uh, in this kind of data, you can find it in my slide share. And that's about doing um, some kind of data-driven infographics. That's a couple of examples. This one, I really love it. It's a word stream. Uh, it's pretty old content, but it's still trending. And I think that's a kind of evergreen content, uh, which is uh, really good. And so it's about um, doing any kind of uh, market insights and revealing market insights and giving it data to uh, people uh, in a visual form. And that uh, was a super simple idea about highlighting top 20 most, the most expensive keywords. And so you can do all those campaigns if you're interested particularly about SEO campaigns in that way. You can use any tool like SEMrush, SERPSAT or whatever and ask them to provide you a custom report because you can't simply uh, find all those keywords in their interface. And so you can also use it uh, for your industry. So for example, you can, um, so uh, you can find out a tool which has categorization in industries keywords. And for example, if you work in e-commerce, uh, uh, in e-commerce niche, you can do like, uh, I don't know, the most uh, searchable keywords in e-commerce niche, for example, that's going to be also interesting for uh, people and for um, so for audience just for uh, final consumers as well so and if you can it's uh, really good in terms of visualization it can be a cutting edge um, content which can uh, which easily could receive more than 1000 uh, social media shares and uh, a good portion of backlink and that's about really simple idea which uh, I implemented personally 
And so what I used, I used Google Consumer Barometer and I created the role of mobile devices. So really, really simple infographic uh, in UK and the US. And yeah, I was able to collect, uh, I was able to collect a good bunch of backlinks uh, as well as social shares. So um, that's a really simple idea. I spent, I think, less than, than uh, two days on putting an idea together and then um, uh, one week uh, a designer was um, uh, creating this infographic. And then the last one is about surveys and that's why I was, I was touched when I was talking about surveys. That the current state, of, that my big project about the current state of digital marketing agencies in UK, US and European regions. And that you can find um, in the end a link to, uh, to a survey. So you can just check it. Um, basically, it, it's, it's like, um, it's a good one because when you, you are able to collect a lot of um, respondents. And so just um, it, in order to make it representative, um, it's it, it, it becoming like a, a gold content uh, because it, 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 it's giving a lot of sense to various groups of people like not only uh, agencies like this, also you can address it to business owners in order to um, uncover the different agencies' rates and gives uh, a more sense to um, to their current vision of how they can interact in terms of uh, what they can expect in terms of services and prices, like if they are interested in a freelancer and if they want to uh, and if they consider as well a uh, digital agency and see whether they can afford it or not. So it's basically about everything in one bundle and that's what you can do uh, as such kind of content you can distribute in a, a multiple ways, not only like using it for uh, particular only for digital emergencies. Also, you can use it for lead generation as well. So you can uh, basically put it on your website um, at um, registration for new by it. And I'm more than sure that people will be interested in downloading it and um, putting in their details in order to get this content. So it really depends on how you are going to use data and how you are going to implement it. But there is, there is nothing bad in experimenting and trying to find uh, various ways of being creative. And if you are not creative as me, so I'm really, so I'm not super creative, but still you can find a way to trigger your creativity and uh, to create interesting ideas based on data. So it's only up to you how you're going to use it. And I really hope that my ideas will inspire you and encourage you to make a good campaign, good content marketing campaigns, which will bring value to your customers and to your potential clients. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to check right now questions. Uh, so I'm going to check uh, chat. And if you have any questions, you're very, very welcome. Uh, so hopefully uh, it was useful. Okay, you, I, you I have see. a question. Or you have to read it out loud. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Thank you very much, Emil, for all your comments. It's greatly appreciated. So as I can see, um okay yeah uh, uh definitely you can get uh, everything in uh, on my slide share and i'm going to share it on my twitter so basically if you don't follow me follow me please or you can just simply go on my twitter and there i'm going to publish uh, uh, a link to my um, slide share in a couple of minutes um okay how do you go about not getting all in by this data? <laughs> so basically, I'm really interested in data, but sometimes I'm also bored. Yeah, let's be honest here. Uh, so spending days and nights with data can be overwhelming for sure. But what I try to do, I try to be inspired by ideas. So if I have an idea, so 
so basically the first step is to invent an idea and when you have an idea you are fueled by it so you are really inspired and you are pushing uh, yourself and trying to make uh, things happen but sometimes i feel really bored honestly that was the, my last i think three days uh, i was spending in analyzing different data sets in order to create an infographics i, I was super bored i was like oh come on when is going to end so yeah but from other case when you see it implemented and when you see the results of those campaigns you understand that it wasn't a waste of time at all so each time i try to encourage myself about the results so that's what i basically do um uh, you, have another, you have another question yeah, just yeah, up yeah, there from Vyacheslav yeah. Matyushin, our regular. Okay, if there is a special tool for B2B research, um, academic segment. Okay, Academical segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think that's a, a matter of Googling it a bit, but you can just try to go to similar rep as well. And... Uh, I don't think there is a, really any tool for any niche. I mean, like a particular one, but what you can do, you can extract it and create in a list and try to uh, find, a, a, so you need to uh, find a starting point and then you can easily extend it. So basically, if you have any kind of list of websites, like two, 10 or 20, you can expand it by using custom rush or SERP start and just simply putting them and uh, in the in, in one of those tools and then uh, using their uh, organic and advertising uh, competitors you can extend this list or you can use similar web and you can find in similar web they have um, it's called similar websites so basically it really depends on whether you have a narrow niche or you have a bigger niche like it for example so it depends here but um, i think it just in, in terms of googling but i don't know this tool i can't tell you this tool right now maybe i need some considerations and then i can give you um the better answer here Oh, there is a Google patent, for example, my, my, maybe if, if it's talking about patents, yeah, you go to Google patent and you can see what's been patented 200 years ago. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I saw you, I saw you, sorry. No, no, no worries. Thank you very much for giving a question here. Uh, so, um, okay, so that's another one question from uh, Emil. So how do you get your idea and make it uh, a reality? What I mean is how do you go about moving an idea from abstract to real? Oh, it's, 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 it's just, I wasn't so, let's say, right, it, it, it's hard because I wasn't so deep in analyzing my mindset and how I, my brain works here, but let's, let, let's try to, um, to analyze it right now. I think, most of my ideas uh, they come from browsing different uh, websites and different data i mean like for example like tweeting google consumer barometer i was like playing around it and then i figure out that i can do this infographic about uk and us mobile uh, sometimes I, I i see some interesting ideas like and i use it like a basement so i try to extend it also, uh, as, as an example here, you can also try to find out some interesting ideas which was really popular some time ago and try to make a recap. That also can be a good idea here because if, uh, if, it's, if we're talking about data, uh, data can be outdated easily and if you can do a recap, you're going to make a fresh uh, data set and can reference to a good uh, uh, research which was uh, conducted previously which is going to be a connection between your idea and um, the other person idea also um, 
as far as uh, uh, I travel a lot and uh, I have a pleasure to speak at different conferences, uh, that's also a fuel for my inspiration. So I communicate with various people and I try to um, uh, to see how they do it and ask uh, the right questions and also um, for example uh, participating uh, in various <clears throat> uh, let's say like activities like Twitter chats for example it can be also inspiring for or um, listening uh, podcasts about SEO also can uh, fuel your inspiration or simply reading books uh, about like uh, which is not really about SEO so here is like the thing like if you really are focused only on SEO and reading articles about SEO you can't generate good ideas because you're really narrow focused you need to see a, bro a broad a broader view in order to generate better ideas so I mean like you shouldn't be uh, focused on, on, on one thing try to extend your landscape and then ideas uh, they're starting to come to your mind so that's uh, I think the better answer to this question so hopefully uh, I did it